Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 11 a.m. to 11.50 a.m. session of the 2019 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are excited to introduce a presentation called Scene Gate Viewer. Our speakers are Lisa Laxton, Frank Ruloff, Natasha Blue, and Troy Schultz. I will briefly introduce our panel speakers today, and please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of sessions, and the full schedule of events. Lisa Laxton, sometimes known in-world as Shailen Erez, is the R&D visionary and CEO of the Open Simulator community focused Infinite Metaverse Alliance, or IMA. She is also president of Laxton Consulting, LLC, a company that provides various technical solutions for virtual world organizational needs. Frank Ruloff is a senior systems engineer at Thales, Netherlands, with expertise areas in training and simulation. He leads an innovation and research for Open Simulator within the Thales Global Company. Natasha Bru is an engineering student at CPE Lyon, France, specializing in network architecture and cybersecurity. She works as an intern at Thales, Netherlands, and has been charged to review the SceneGate viewer security issues. Troy Schultz, known in world as Seth Nygaard, is a multidiscipline developer in real-time systems for industrial, automotive, and other critical environments. His roles include Senior Hardware Designer, Senior Systems Administrator, Engineering Manager, and Chief Technology Officer, as well as Owner Operator of Refuge Grid. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC19. Welcome everyone, and let's begin this panel session. Good morning. Thank you for that uh, great introduction and congratulations to the, the organizers here on your first day yesterday uh, and today is going very well. Great, great sessions are happening. We'd like to talk to you about one of our projects, which is the Scene Gate Viewer for Open Simulator. Since the open beta launch in November of 2019, there have been quite a few questions, so we hope to have time for Q&A. Uh, with our panel after the slide presentation. Infinite Metaverse Alliance is a strategic partner. Thales share a common mission to focus on inclusive design thinking to advance virtual worlds, virtual reality, and synthetic environments. Project SceneGate is one of several integrated projects supporting this mission. The SceneGate viewer provides the user with a gate to a 3D scene in a virtual world. So we asked the research question from a use case perspective, do we need a new viewer for Open Simulator? And this is one of the things that uh, we gathered information on in our own surveys, and this was pretty much validated by Maria Korlov's uh, surveys that she has done that she talked about earlier today or yesterday. Um, the answer is yes. As a result of the research, development gaps were revealed and use cases were defined. Accessibility by design is needed to combat digital marginalization. This occurs when the needs of users with disabilities are not met. Hearing impaired users may be unable to communicate effectively using the listen from avatar position option. Mobility impaired users may be unable to communicate effectively when frequently changing the avatar's camera position. Visually impaired users may have immediate need for variations in color and contrast. Cognition impaired users may face immediate challenges related to hearing, mobility, or vision stressors. So onboarding also remains a challenge due to steep learning curves and orientation time. Specific virtual world use cases include classes with users who are students and educators, meetings with users who are attendees and speakers, and immersive interactive environments with users who are new users or trainees. 
Usability improvements are needed to put the power into the hands of the users and to accommodate these needs. During our analysis, non-trivial challenges in development were found. The original Linden Lab source code project developers have priorities that are related to their business focus. And the open simulator stakeholders are not a consideration for those original source developers. Existing third-party viewer project developer priorities are divergent. Everybody has a little bit different idea of where they want to go with things. Now, the lack of standards compliance impacts the interoperability with other applications like 3D modelers or screen readers uh, and a host of other uh, devices or software applications that assist users who use virtual worlds in very different ways. The documentation is non-existent or not up to date. I think it's time to stop doing it this way. Admiral Grace Hopper said the most dangerous phrase in the language is, we've always done it this way. So it became clear that open source software forks were needed after extensive discussion and investigation into existing project roadmaps and priorities. So we began forming a new development team to meet immediate needs identified and consider users as developers. So surveys were conducted, software was analyzed to identify and involve the stakeholders. Through strategic collaboration, IMA and Dallas are implementing systems engineering approaches to support future viewer development. The viewer design scope defines requirements and stakeholders. The requirements we define so far include open source and distributable, reliably runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux systems. That's what we call platform agnostic. Uh, so we want to be able to support all active versions or derivatives of open simulators. So we call that open simulator agnostic. Uh, we want it to be based on an adaptable modern code base. We'd like it to be customizable by users and by organizations. And finally, to be standards compliant where possible. The primary stakeholders that were identified are new users uh, or those attending classes and meetings, disabled users of all skill levels, grid owners because they're focused on user needs, creators of interactive environments and objects, educators using virtual worlds, and lastly, collaborators using virtual worlds. So we came up with a solution. And after looking at all of the different existing uh, code bases out there, the Alchemy Viewer code base was selected for the Seengate Viewer. Our current development focus is on immediate improvements related to accessibility, onboarding, performance, and usability. And this is directly driven by our analysis and answers to our research question. So our future development focus then includes the Echo Voice integration, which we talked about earlier this morning. Uh, renderer decoupling, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Standards compliance, uh, improved security, which Natasha will be talking about. Better documentation, obviously, is needed. And development of an advanced mode. The advanced mode would then be geared towards providing creators with the tools that they feel they need uh, beyond what is already available. So our project roadmap is available online, and I'll, I'll post a link to that at the end of the presentation. But in a general sense, the viewer efforts for IMA began with research in 28, and this involved uh, previous community and viewer user surveys, uh, survey analyses and community feedback. We have weekly meetings. We've had a lot of involvement um, from uh, several grids. 
and extensive testing of multiple viewers by multiple stakeholders. I want to say I appreciate all of the work that everyone has done in volunteering to do all of those tests. And the proof of concept that was done, uh, contributed by Talos, is a simplified singularity viewer. Uh, that proof of concept we deemed uh, Project Educate. We learned a lot from the project, and it became a driver for the SceneGate viewer. And then, of course, we looked at the available code bases uh, and analyzed them, and we decided to go with the Alchemy code base. Now, systems engineering milestones were then established for the development timeline and the project roadmap. Specific milestones included our alpha development, uh, closed alpha testing, the beta development, closed beta testing, and where we are right now is in the open beta testing. Uh, we hope to have a release ready at the end of January. It really depends on the results of the open beta testing. Now, Elise Roy. She is a wonderful uh, technologist. I mean, she really made the point that when we design for disability first, you often stumble upon solutions that are better than those when we would design for the norm. And that is really sort of a mantra that we have when we think about design thinking. And we are combining that with a systems engineering approach for all of our projects. So when you think about who's involved, Project SceneGate has various areas of participation. Uh, we have the hypergrid users uh, from different grids uh, involved in the testing and um, also in some of the R&D that we're doing uh, supporting this project. We have experienced developed team members who are actually active in open simulator communities. Uh, and I think that's important because if your development team is not active, they don't have um, a, a pulse on the user community and understanding what the user community concerns are. And then, of course, we have industry interns. Natasha is one of them uh, from Talos who have been uh, really contributing a lot to the project and really appreciate that as well. Now, IMA meeting attendees who attend our meetings every week, uh, some of them are here at the conference, they voted on what the default preference changes would be for the SceneGate viewer, and of course, we had some advice of things that we learned from Project Educate as to what those preference defaults should be. Uh, we also had external human-computer interaction review uh, and usability reviews for the user interface. And finally, uh, we looked at industry standards, and that really drove changes in the default avatar camera view. Uh, and that was one of the big things that we saw get reviewed by Ramesh uh, on uh, his video that he posted. So the most frequently, frequently asked question has been, What's new? So let's see some screenshots. The ability to hear voice equally or listen from all positions was added to the SceneGate viewer. This used to be there and was removed, I believe, back in Firestorm 501, right around that time frame, because Linden Lab had removed that capability from their viewer. Uh, this is a big accessibility issue, uh, so we made sure that we added that back. It is currently working, and we've had a lot of good comments about that. The feature that helps users who may have hearing, cognitive, or mobility issues communicate in voice immediately, that is what that listen from all positions was about. But then we also had to consider the visually impaired users. And visual impairments are not always totally blind. We do have visually impaired users who are using virtual world. So when you consider that aspect, you say, okay, well, you might need to have more colors and contrast options uh, to be available. So 
both of these aspects of accessibility improvements are really, really important, not just to disabled users, but also to new users in simplified mode, because those new users, you don't know what their disabilities are. You know, so this is really important to address both of these. And, of course, they're not limited to just a simplified mode. There is also uh, an extended mode, so those features are available. Now, on a simplified mode, uh, the default user interface scan provides the users with that custom color and contrast. But in simplified mode, a very limited amount of information is available to the user, to that new user. They, they can't build and they, they don't have uh, the ability to see very many toolbar buttons on their menu as well. So when you think about that and you say, okay, we are really addressing that cognitive overload that happens for new users, uh, and in implementing this simplified mode and minimal toolbar buttons, we are effectively taking a bulldozer to a steep learning curve. And I will give Selby Evans credit for that phrase. <laughs> the toolbar button defaults presented to new users are limited to only the ones that they need to lose, learn to use virtual worlds. So that further reduces that onboarding time for new users. When new users are ready to learn more, they do not need to download and learn how to use another viewer. There is an extended mode for experienced users. So in this mode, they simply just go to their preferences and select mode, uh, then select extended and restart the viewer. Uh, and so what you're seeing there on the screen is that. Now, the default avatar camera settings was something that we mentioned earlier. Uh, any of you who have ever played video games, you, you notice that your avatar camera is not looking down at your avatar at an angle the way the default Second Life viewer was and, and most of the other third-party viewers do. And this creates difficulty in moving around inside virtual structures. Uh, so, taking their standards as an example, we made changes to the default camera for SceneGate, and the feedback from testers has been pretty positive. So, when we did that, we had to make sure it obviously applies to all modes. Now, advanced users can change their camera settings temporarily or permanently. We do have some that prefer that other um, camera view, uh, especially people who cam around rather than walk around. Now, grid manager error checking is another improvement uh, that came from Talus, and we appreciate that because we found that a lot of users complained it was difficult to add new grids out on the hypergrid to their uh, grid manager. Uh, and it's sort of simple uh, to approach, and I liked what they did. We are providing immediate feedback if somebody makes a typo or the grid they're attempting to add is not available at the time that they add it. So users get that immediate feedback, and that allows them to manage their own grid list. And so what we've done in our default grid list is a very short list of grids uh, that most users in Open Simulator have accounts on. And if you ever get to where you have this huge list and you just want to start over, you can then load the default grid list and it, it'll just put that in there. So this really goes back to a usability mantra is don't make me think. And that's what we have to think about when we consider design thinking is what is the user's perspective and how can we make it easier for those users to use the software. And of course, this feature is available in both simplified and extended modes. 
Now, the one last thing that we did on usability improvements really is to look at where do buttons belong on the screen and how can we uh, make the most usable experience available to new users. And the suggestions that we got were to group the buttons according to their general function. For a simplified mode, the left side button group represents two tools associated with the user's account. The right side button group represents two tools associated with places the avatar can go and how to get there. And then the center bottom button group represents a commonly used button to communicate, navigate, and find people. Users with specific disability needs or preferences can customize the toolbar button layout if needed. Uh, we did not remove uh, that option. Now, with any software projects, we are always going to have bugs that we need to fix and also to improve performance. And right after uh, we started this project, uh, Windows released an update, uh, which I believe was build 1903, that caused the viewer to crash on exit. Uh, a lot of the third-party viewers uh, saw this problem. And so um, we immediately, obviously, we had to fix that. That was uh, a showstopper. And uh, fortunately, the Alchemy dev team was already on top of it, and we were able to get that from them and port that into the Syngate viewer code. So that was our first bug fix. Uh, Talus also had a requirement for uh, dynamic texture loading uh, to be much faster than it was uh, for their presentation efforts. So they provided uh, a contribution that allowed us to really, really improve the performance from the user's perspective. Textures do load much faster. Uh, that combined with the deep graphics quality from the Alchemy code base uh, was very positively received. Uh, some of the comments included, it's pretty fast and slick, loading speed is quick, render quality seems better, seems to run okay on my media PC, at least with the least power of the one that I use at home. And we really appreciate all the testing and the comments and feedback because that helps us make this project even better. Now, when we talked about future viewer considerations, uh, this research is underway. Uh, we talked a little bit about our thoughts on this last conference, uh, and I just wanted you to know we are moving forward with that. So when we look at that, we do it from the use case applications. And the initial activity involves splitting the renderer and the data handling parts of the viewer. Development goals include a modern look and a feel that is used by gaming and modern UI packages as the code is developed. If the R&D is successful, gaming, VR, and web render engines can be used with the viewer. And so this may lead to uh, another project of a viewer that may be called WebGate, may be called something else, uh, may fall under the EOS uh, project within IMA. Uh, because we know from our own surveys and Maria's surveys, a web-based uh, access to Open Simulator is desirable. Uh, it also uh, can drive VR, uh, resolving some of the technical issues associated with uh, internet latency uh, and low FPS or variable FPS. So this is something I'm very excited to see. Uh, happening, and Dallas has two students who are really working hard on that right now. Now, we also want to provide new users with uh, user interface options to support any of the new features designed as plugins. And this is really why we had to take control of a code base because our project and design goals were not. Uh, aligned with the roadmaps of any of the other viewer devs. However, this is all open source, and after we do the release, the code becomes open 
uh, in the repository so that other viewer dev teams can pick up some of these improvements uh, and feature additions that we've made uh, to help them along their roadmap. Now, one of the primary considerations involves maintainability, and this includes establishing a clear, structured, and documented design. Uh, this also will likely involve some refactoring of the existing Seengate code base. A new package seen in the diagram as OpenSim interface is needed to begin decoupling the renderer. Design goals also include the use of modern libraries, and packages to optimize security. Two student interns are actively working on the decoupling. Natasha has been working on uh, looking at security vulnerabilities. So IMA has seven primary project areas, with most of them having some relation or integration to at least one other one. Three of these are directly related to Project SceneGate. Project ECHO, which we heard about this morning, includes ECHO Voice source code, which will integrate with the SceneGate viewer to provide seamless configuration of different voice solutions. And also, and this is one that's really important to me, is the future roadmap item common to both the viewer and the voice project it includes text-to-speech and speech-to-text capabilities to address accessibility and to provide transcription by design. So if you have people, you're having a class, you're having a meeting, you have some presentation, you would like to have that live transcription. It really uh, is not just an accessibility benefit, it's also a logistics benefit because people who can't attend would have that transcript available to them. Now, development efforts include compatibility with all third-party viewers. Now, Project Dreamgate uh, is a Firestorm viewer fork for Open Simulator, and the improvements are needed so that those with disabilities who prefer the Firestorm user interface do not experience that same digital marginalization. And Project Helios is that encompasses our open simulator R&D on the server side uh, and in the grid architecture, but it also provides support for all IMA projects on the Metaverse Depot grid. Now, grid work directly related to Project SceneGate, and I'm sure Gentle Heron will be happy to hear about this, um, includes bringing the Diva Wi-Fi user pages into standards compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, otherwise uh, known as 508 compliance. What we found when we did testing was the pages were only about 60 to 80 percent compliant uh, with the standards, which meant that it did not work with screen readers. So if you have a visually impaired user, uh, they can't create their own account without somebody assisting them because the screen reader was unable to read the web pages for sign up. We brought those into compliance. Uh, the user pages are done. They are all 100 percent. Uh, the admin pages I will get to uh, as soon as I can. But uh, for anybody who wants to look at what we did to bring them into compliance, you're able to go to our Diva Wi-Fi pages for the Metaverse Depot grid, right-click, view the source, uh, and grab it. It's uh, freely available. So we encourage others to update their pages, especially we know that the uh, Dream Grid uh, all of those 300 some odd grids out there, uh, they are using the Diva Wi-Fi um, interface. And if you are allowing new users to create accounts on your grids, you might want to go ahead and update that. Now, the Metaverse Depot grid, I had a few questions about that earlier. I wanted to make sure I included that in this particular presentation because it does support these projects that we're working on. Uh, we basically have a grid architecture that extends the research of the former MOSES team. The MOSES in a box used a single virtual machine image of a grid to deliver a platform agnostic plug and play solution. And what we did was ask the research question, can we use multiple virtual machines instead of one to decentralize the virtual world on an open simulator grid? And if we did that, what would the benefits be? 
Now, the research answer was yes, with trade-offs. Uh, open simulator-related development has evolved from this research. Now, some benefits include segregation, ease of installation, ease of administration, and ease of remote machine connections. Trade-offs included increased virtual CPU and RAM resources because the virtual machines need some of those resources themselves. Uh, but the approach will deliver a platform agnostic plug-and-play solution called Amabox. Now, work continues with a focus on further easing that grid administration, security of remote machine connections, and security of the scene gate viewer itself. Coming full circle, we have a primary goal for all of our R&D to develop a stable, secure virtual world platform to expand the community into new markets. We need more users and developers to advance virtual world technologies. We then need to pass the torch to the developers of tomorrow. We also need to meet typical IT department requirements to generate funding so the platform will be sustainable for all users. We can apply design thinking considering users as developers with a systems engineering approach. This means we not only need stable, structured, documented source code, but also to improve security in all use cases. Now, on that note, uh, welcome Natasha, who will discuss her research around security issues. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm here today to talk about security in the Syngate viewer. I will, not, I will try not to go too far in technical details, but explain quickly the meaning of the vocabulary I use for everyone to understand. However, if you have questions, feel free to ask during the Q&A session after the presentation. So, security is an important matter. It's a question of trust and every user, military or civilian, deserves safety for their data. We all care about who can see our information on social media and everywhere on the internet, and we don't want to share everything with everyone. It is the same thing with the Syngate viewer. If someone isn't authorized to see our information, it should never be able to see it. Currently, the viewer is not secure enough. When trying to connect to a grid, a warning message appears. So the main question is how will we improve security in the Syngate viewer? I will focus on three aspects of the issue, beginning with the logging process. Um, next slide, please, Lisa. So credentials are sensible information. In order to connect to a grid, the user needs to enter his username and password on the logging panel. The viewer will then send them to the server. The username is sent on plain text, and the password as an MD5 hash. MD5 is an encryption algorithm using a mathematical operation that can't be reversed to hide the value of, the, of your password. But MD5 has vulnerabilities and should not be used to encrypt passwords. It is vulnerable to cryptographic collisions, so two different passwords can have the same hash, and also to brute force attack where all possible combinations are tried uh, until the attacker finds the password. Here, I used a rainbow table attack to crack MD5. So, rainbow tables give the password associated to a certain hash if it's present on the database. So, I open a network analyzer to capture the data transiting between the server and the viewer. I found the authentication uh, packet, found the MD5 and pasted it into a web browser. The result appears immediately. So, how can we secure credentials? First, to prevent cryptographic collisions and make brute force more difficult for attackers, we can use SHA-256 or SHA-512 hashes instead of MD5. These are a recommended uh, encryption algorithm. Then, to prevent rainbow table attacks, we can use a SALT. 
A salt is a random string that will be added to the password before hashing it, making, it, making the results less predictable. Finally, and it is a very important point, implementing transport layer security, TLS, is necessary. This will allow the communication between the server and the viewer to go through an encrypted channel. So the attacker can see the information exchanged, but uh, implemented t implementing TLS must um, be done on server side. Next slide, please. This brings us to the second aspect, the communication between the server and the viewer. Sensible data can be exchanged between the two, and currently everything is sent in clear text, without encryption, and everyone can open a network analyzer such as Wireshark and capture the traffic to see what data are exchanged. The attacker can access user information, avatar information, video and media content, and even some code and the chat messages. This is very bad. So, how can we prevent um, this information from being exposed? Once again, TLS must be used, but this is not enough. Sensible data must be encrypted before uh, being sent to the server. Uh, once again, this requires server-side modification. Um, next slide, please. So the last issue is related to third-party libraries. Indeed, usage of libraries is needed for a gain of time during the development, and it allows developers to dispose of better tools for their code, so better functionalities in the software. But they also increase the attack surface due to more line of codes. Also, some libraries are calling other libraries that increase again the attack surface. Moreover, it happens that libraries have known vulnerabilities with exploits ready for any amateur attacker to use. Um, the number of known vulnerabilities is, ri is rising when we use outdated libraries or unsupported libraries. So what is the current situation and how can we improve it? Uh, next slide, please. So currently, 79% uh, of the Syngate viewer libraries are outdated and only 15% are up to date. The vulnerabilities found in the libraries currently, currently used are serious enough to represent a major risk. Next slide, please. In order to improve security, we first need to update the packages to the last version. There will be less known vulnerabilities, but this issue will require constant attention. It is primordial to watch for new vulnerabilities and stay up to date. Next slide, please. So to summarize, the first change we need to make is the implementation of TLS, but this change must be made on server side. Then we need to be careful about how data are sent. Keep in mind that security is an everyday challenge. Every day, new vulnerabilities are discovered, and we need to stay up to date. Finally, and hopefully we will have a much more secure view viewers than it currently is. Thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you, Natasha. We clearly need to address these security issues. Our, on our project status, the repository wiki structure is built, but we need help to finish and maintain it. Items to finish include tutorials and frequently asked questions. Build instructions for Mac are pending. Anyone can participate in testing and bug reporting or even contribute bug fixes.
We plan to expand the development team as work progresses. If you're interested, contact me. And thank you for joining our session today. We have some time for discussion. Are there any questions for the panel? Uh, there's one question that came up a couple of times, and that is, how do we download it? All right. Uh, this page I just put up here has the links. Of course, the screen is not clickable here. Wouldn't that be a lovely function uh, for us to get? Uh, we would have to do a media on a prem to do that. Uh, but the downloads.infinitemetaverse.org slash index.php slash downloads. Uh, or if you just go to the domain itself, uh, that subdomain, you would look in the main menu in the upper right. It says Project Downloads. Click that, and that will get you to that page. Uh, be aware this is not a release. It is an open beta, uh, but most of our testing so far has been positively received, and we still have no bug reports of anything that we didn't already know about. Okay, I have a question from uh, YouTube. General uh, Newt Nutt asks, I wonder if the max usable VRAM has been increased above 2 gigabytes. That is something that I can't answer, unfortunately. Our, our Mac team people uh, were not able to be here today. Uh, there is a Mac version in work. So I will pass that on. Okay. Um, okay, and Alan Scott is, asks, um, is there funding for all of this, and how much, and who is funding it? We are partially funded for this project. Uh, uh, grateful thanks to Mr. Selby Evans, uh, also known well in this virtual world. Okay. Um, well, I can, I can add to that that this Dallas... Uh, is funding uh, part of uh, of our research correct uh, through the uh, through our R and D uh, budget. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so this is a strategic partnership between IMA and Dallas. Uh, Gentle Heron asked if the slides are on slide sh slide share. Um, I have not put them up, but we will make them available. Um, there's a question also from Robert Adams about an OAuth login. Uh, Natasha, do you want to address that? Um, yes, I think currently OAuth is used uh, for logging with uh, social media. But um, currently on the Syngate viewer, it's not really working because this needs to be a feature of the grid and not uh, of the viewer. So we will look um, this uh, further, but um, right now uh, I don't think it's possible to. I don't think it's the the third thing we need to do uh, in terms of security. And I see a uh, question in chat uh, from Alan. Uh, why did you not take uh, Firestorm and create a simplified Firestorm? Uh, one of the things that we mentioned earlier uh, was that we went through an extensive testing. Uh, we found that Alchemy performed better for the items that are on our roadmap. However, uh, because Firestorm does have a large user base uh, and it has some advanced tools that Alchemy did not have, we decided we would have a parallel project called Dreamgate, and that is our Firestorm fork. We'll be working on that in 2020. I, I also want to add uh, a remark about the um, about a simplified viewer. Um, you can if you want to um, if you want to uh, build your own simplified 
version. So I can imagine that maybe for for some uh, uh, specific use, people want to have a little bit of a different uh, a different version of the simplified viewer. You can do that by uh, recompiling it and adding some uh, parts in the XML file so that you can even create your own simplified viewer. The modes allow you to make any distinction that you want. You can also have three modes if you want to or five. Right, and, and this goes back to um, our requirements. Everything we do is requirements driven, uh, which is pretty much an industry standard. We wanted it to be customizable by organizations. So say, for example, you represent a university and you're running a, a sort of a closed education environment. You have a batch of uh, usernames. Uh, and you don't want them to have uh, Metaverse Depot or Talos Private Grid or OS Grid or whatever. You don't want that on the grid list available to them. This is really easy to uh, simplify for you. Okay, there's a question from Star Farer. Um, do you look at security against ransomware? Natasha, I think that question is for you. Uh, yes, uh, so we didn't look at security um, against ransomware, but I think uh, the problem will be when you will download uh, the viewer and maybe uh, providing a hash uh, alongside the uh, archive when you download the Syngate viewer will be a good idea to prevent from uh, ransomware. Okay, we've got a couple minutes left, maybe enough for one more question, if there are any others, or perhaps some final thoughts, if there aren't any more questions. Maybe maybe I can elaborate a little bit on the, on the future viewer uh, that uh, Lisa uh, thought. Um, the idea there is to make a viewer that is very flexible in what it does. Well, we, we started with uh, the, the renderer, because of the renderer. Uh, the renderer separation is to get a uh, a constant frame a frame rate so that you can use 3D headsets without getting sick. But the other uh, the other parts of there is to have an adaptable UI so that if you use the viewer for a specific course, you can bring in those specific commands that you want to happen into the UI of the viewer. And uh, the other other part of that is to have uh, multiple VoIPs. Uh, that can be connected. Well, we talked about that in, in SceneGate. And another thing is that we want to make a, uh, a general interface that you're not dependent on every change that you have in OpenSIM, but you can uh, more or less uh, limit the uh, changes to a certain part of the viewer and make it easier to maintain. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Seth, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to chime in for the folks that didn't see the presentation this morning. Uh, Seth, didn't you say that you have Echo Voice working not only with SceneGate, but also with some of the other viewers as well? Uh, yes. I have uh, Echo Voice working with currently with Firestorm, Alchemy, SceneGate, and Singularity, 32 and 64-bit versions. Currently only Windows, although I'm actively working on a version that will run under Linux. Not right. using wine, it'll be native. Right. And and why this is important is, yes, we have a goal to have this working with SceneGate and eventually our, our DreamGate, which is a Firestorm fork, but also uh, to work with the other viewers. And why that's really important is because we want to bring in text-to-speech, speech-to-text to help improve the accessibility of the virtual environment for people that are using all of the viewers in all of the versions of OpenSIM. Are there any other questions? I think we're about at the wrap-up point. So I would like to thank you, Lisa, Frank, Natasha, and Troy, for a wonderful presentation. Very, very informative and necessary work. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much for it. Thank you. Thank you. If you have any questions, we are in booth four uh, at the break. Expo Zone 3. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. 
Following this session, there's a 30-minute break, and the next session will begin at 12.30 p.m. in this keynote region and is entitled, A VR Tool to Improve Your Public Speaking Skills. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 19 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and explore the Hypergrid Tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region along with sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. <laughs> 